catch some students up as we are we start this this day. Um, but my name is Matt Morano. I'm an associate dean of admission at Providence College. I'm also a PC alum, so in the interest of full disclosure, I am very biased when it comes to Providence College. I think that it's a great place to spend four years to learn as a student and to grow as a person. And I wanted to thank you for taking some time out of your day to learn a little bit more about what makes Providence College unique, what makes us special, and why you might think of attending Providence College as an international student. And so I have some colleagues from the college here with me today that will help kind of give you a general overview of campus, as well as give you an idea of some of the resources that will be available to you as a student at PC. And so how this webinar is intended to work is that we'll give you kind of a, a rundown of Providence College in general. We'll give you the fast facts and talk a little bit about student life and, and what campus life is like. Um, I will talk about the admission process and how that might be a little bit different for a students uh, that are coming from outside the US. And then you're also gonna hear from uh, individuals on campus that will talk about student resources that you can take advantage of once you are here in order to help you become the best versions of yourself academically and make sure that your transition to campus is a smooth one and that you're able to handle academic work while still being able to have time to get involved in things that happen outside of the classroom. So if you have any questions once we get underway, feel free to utilize the Q&A portion that you'll see at the bottom of the screen, and then we can answer questions as we head along. So ideally, we will wrap up between 45 minutes and an hour from now. I'm sorry, with a delayed start, if, uh, that might affect your plans. If you need to leave a little early, that's okay. It's understandable. But uh, we hope that you are able to stick around and learn a little bit more about us. So I think to start, the easiest thing for us to do is just to introduce ourselves, the people that you see on the screen, and we will go from there. So I've done my intro already. Um, I'll let Yuho uh, take it over for next, and we will get underway. Thank you, Matt. My name is Yuho Karpinen. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admissions here at Providence College. Um, really happy to talk to you all today. Um, also, Full disclosure, I'm a previous international student myself, uh, so really able to kind of relate to you all and explain um, some of the tips and, and things that really helped me and, and made my time so special here in the U.S. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Amori. Uh, Amori, can you go next? Yeah, sure, Ken. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amori Washington, and I am the academic skills slash ESL specialist here in the Office of Academic Services. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I'll give it to Katie. Hello, my name is Katie Fernandez. I'm the Assistant Director for Student Success and Retention. And I work in the Office of Academic Services as well, partnering with Amori, and we are happy to have you here today and, and look forward to continuing conversations about your academic transition um, on PC community. Okay, fantastic. Well, I think, as I said, to start off, we're going to have um, you help give you a overview of campus and tell you why attending a place like Providence College is an exciting prospect. So you help, I'll turn things over to you and you can take it away. Thank you, Matt. All right, so let's get started. A little crash course to PC. Um, first of all, Providence College, we can start with the location. Um, located in Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island. Rhode Island is the smallest state in the United States on the East Coast, New England. Um, known for, you know, as the ocean state. So beautiful coast uh, beaches in the area, uh, fantastic schools as well in the Providence area. There's eight different colleges, 30,000 students in this metropolitan area. So really fantastic student experience you'll get as an international student while being located on the safe campus in Providence, in Providence College's campus um, with, with full-time security and having you that US traditional US campus experience um, that international students are typically looking for. So kind of all those amenities close by uh, city at your backyard and beaches close by as well. Providence College itself, um, we classify ourselves as a private Catholic liberal arts institution. 
So we are the only institution run by Dominican friars. So you have that Catholic uh, background, uh, which is really fantastic. It's, it's an institution um, that allows you to practice faith. However, um, we welcome students from all different backgrounds. Um, uh, no matter what your background is, you're welcome here on campus. We do have different, uh, di a lot of diversity on campus and diff students from different backgrounds. So we welcome everybody, but you have this, um, Core of Faith, which is the institution that cares about you as a full individual, not just about your intellectual growth, um, but spiritual and, and personal uh, development as well. Um, also, we are a liberal arts institution, um, which really means you have that smaller class size feel, uh, personalized attention and support tailored to you at Providence College, which is really fantastic for international students. And, and really a community here at Providence College. Overall, the total population around 4,100 students, um, average class size around 22. Uh, when you go to your main, last two years could be smaller than that as well. So you really get to know your professors. Um, they will be able to help you and they will know you by name. You're, so you're not just a number, uh, which is, you know, really helpful not only in class and, and ask questions in your uh, relating to your class, but for professional development opportunities, research, research opportunities, about 40% of our students utilize those as well. Sometimes as easy as sending an email to the professor to start with research, for example. You'll have an academic advisor and also career center that will be guiding throughout your journey um, here at Providence College. So internships um, and, and OPT or CPT opportunities for you international students uh, are, you know, relatively easy to come by if you're proactive and utilize the opportunities given to you um, here at Providence College. Since we're so centrally located in close to the city in Providence, one hour from Boston, about three hours, two and a half from New York City, you'll have a lot of different financial hubs and, and companies and headquarters in the area who really love to come and recruit our students and hire them. While also we have a fantastic alumni network of over 50,000 alums in the prior community, um, successful alums that really like to give back and, and, and hire our students um, as well. As far as the programs, academic programs here at, at Providence College, the liberal arts core curriculum is a little unique here. So you have a fantastic program in development of Western civilization, also known as CIV. This is really the blueprint of our core curriculum uh, here at PC, meaning first four semesters, every class is four credits. You'll have two professors teaching your classes. So all students from no matter what your major is need to take these classes. So it creates a really unique dialogue uh, you'll go through human history from classical age all the way up to the modern period, um, through literature, readings, writings. And, and really the purpose of this program is teach you the soft skills needed to succeed, not only here at Providence College academically, but in life later on when you graduate, um, if it's here in the U.S. So, or going back home uh, after you graduate. So really great uh, public speaking skills, reading, writing critical thinking skills that you'll acquire from the Providence College um, education. So we have three different colleges uh, that majors are housed under, College of Arts and Sciences, different kind of humanities, sciences, biology, chemistry, political science, um, many different fantastic options here. Economics is a big one with international students as well. School of Business, about Approximately 40% of our students in the school business. It's a very, very strong business school. AACSB accredited, which is the golden standard for our top business school. Um, so, so you'll have that option as well. Four different majors, finance, marketing, management, and accounting. Really strong return on investment. Uh, many students do multiple internships uh, through our connections um, and, and get really fantastic employment opportunities after graduating. Then we have also School of Professional Studies, uh, Health Management, uh, and, and also education programs housed here. 
What I do want to say about the academics as well, it's very flexible. So there's cross pollination between programs. You can do many students at PC, do majors, minors, or even double majors, and kind of creating your own path with the help of your know, academic and career advisors uh, provided to you. A little bit about the school spirit and the school life. It is really unique here at Providence College, having uh, around 4,000 students, which is relatively small to medium uh, in the US uh, sizes uh, of universities. Um, having division one athletics here, we are part of a conference called Big East, which is one of the biggest, uh, strongest conferences in athletically here in the United States. And it's really unique to have a school our size not only participate, but be very successful as well. Our ice hockey and track and field has won the national championships. Um, also soccer or football, as many of you call it, um, has went to the final four and, and, and is really strong year after year. Um, basketball as well, it's a lot of fun to go to our basketball games um, with, with screaming fans, thousands of fans. Um, in the Dunkin' Donut Center, which is about five to ten minutes from campus, um, so it's a it's just a fantastic experience you get to have here, while having the smaller class size feel, having a school spirit, and and community of a bigger school as well, uh, which really enriches your experience here, uh, getting that full experience at Providence College. We also have outside of athletics. Um, over 120 different clubs and organizations you can utilize from leadership opportunities, um, volunteering, community service. So many of our Providence College students are very active on campus. So not only are they academically very bright, but really give back to their community, um, get involved on campus, which is why my biggest tips as a previous international my student myself in order to really get into the community it, at your new school, make sure you get started on, on clubs and orgs. That's the best way to make friends and really kickstart your journey at your new university. And, and here at Providence College, it's no different. So students really like to get involved and we are looking for students who wanna be part of the campus community. Um, Otherwise, also very big uh, global education um, institution. So you'll have opportunities, even as an international student, possibly to study abroad or go to different countries through clubs or, or research, or our development of Western civilization program, which actually has a semester in London, UK, as your fourth semester. We know it's a very global uh, environment with corporates having uh, global uh, branches. So the many PC students and, and the PC experience tends to be uh, tailored to this as well, be making you even more marketable after you graduate, making that return on investment very, very high from Providence College. But that that's a quick introduction to Providence College. Just a summary, smaller class size feel, fantastic environment here at Providence College and a great school spirit through our athletics and organizations. Right. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the end as well. Uh, but I'm going to pass it on now to uh, Matt to talk about the admissions process. Hey, thank you very much, Yuho. Uh, so I have some slides to go through uh, regarding the admission process at Providence College. So I think Yuho did a really good job of giving everyone a really good overview of campus and the opportunities that are available to you. I would encourage you if you have any more questions, I mean, certainly ask us uh, in the Q&A here, but also if you utilize the website, that's a great resource for you in terms of figuring out what the offerings are like on campus uh, and what is there to do for current students. You, you'll actually have the opportunity to chat with some current PC students directly from the website. And I think connecting with current students is always going to be a, a really good resource for you. Uh, they're the ones that will give you the most authentic viewpoint about what it's like to be a student on campus, how classes are, what is there to do both on campus and off campus on the weekends, uh, and that will definitely help you out kind of form your decisions uh, about Providence College. So here is just kind of a screenshot of 
uh, campus, in, or excuse me, the city uh, in general. Uh, and this shows you uh, one of the, the nicer aspects of Providence, the new pedestrian bridge that was just built. Uh, and this is a good snapshot of downtown. And so I, I wanted to give you a sense of how the admission process works, how we read applications and, and how we make decisions and what's important to us when we go through your application. And so I think our review process is kind of boiled down into three components and three aspects. So the first thing that Yuho and I will go through when we read an application is we will take a look at your transcript. Uh, and you will need to provide a translated copy of your transcript if it is not already in English uh, so that we can evaluate that uh, as correctly as possible. So that's the first step. Uh, and when we look at your transcript, we are looking to make sure that you are taking a challenging curriculum and that you have prepared yourself for the type of academic work that you will encounter when you arrive on our campus. And so we give everyone what we call a strength of curriculum rating. And that's a number from one to 10, where a 10 represents a student that has taken the most challenging and the most demanding curriculum that's available to them. A one represents someone who has taken a very weaker curriculum. That's usually someone that we're kind of puzzled as to how they have graduated over the course of their high school career. Typically, especially with students coming from outside the US, we tend to find that a lot of the curriculums that you are taking are either a national curriculum that is kind of standard across a specific country, or we have a lot of international students that are taking the full international baccalaureate program as well. And so as a result, usually curriculum, the way that we evaluate curriculum, at least for international students, is quite high. Uh, if you're doing the full IB diploma, we are essentially taking that as the most demanding curriculum that you could take. I mean, if you're doing the full IB diploma, it's essentially college level work for two years of your high school experience. And so we think that is excellent preparation for the type of academic work that you will encounter on campus. But if you're not taking the full IB, that's also totally fine. Many students um, do not take the full IB. So we are going to evaluate each student's curriculum on an individual case-by-case -case basis. I think it certainly helps if students have taken challenging classes in the areas of study that you might be interested in once you arrive on our campus. So for example, if you are intending on majoring in the sciences, we are likely looking at your math and science grades and your math and science courses with a little bit more scrutiny than if you applied as an English major or a history major to Providence College. I think ideally we want you to do well in all of your subject areas, but the, the course selection that you have made uh, is going to be viewed in the context of the area of academic interest that you would like to study once you arrive on campus. So curriculum is the first piece. That is always the number one. Number two is your performance in that curriculum, the grades that you receive uh, in your academic career. So we go through the process of recalculating everyone's GPA, which means that we take the weight out of classes that you are taking. Uh, you may get an additional weight for a, uh, an advanced class or an honors course or an AP or IB class that you're taking, but we distill that down into just the actual grade that you receive in a class. And really the goal for us, the reason that we do this is so we can compare GPA as evenly as possible. Now, I think one of the uh, things that's important to know with students coming, applying from outside the US or even international students that are applying that are already within the US is that I think your applications are going to be viewed in the context of the entire applicant pool, but there is a specific team of counselors within the office that primarily review international applications. And so I think we have a little bit more of a knowledge base and a little bit more context 
to judge the curriculum that you've taken and that's been available to you at your high school. Um, and also a little bit more knowledge about your educational backgrounds and the context of uh, your educational experience throughout your years uh, of high school. So yes, you're, you're being looked at by a number of different people within the office, but they are oftentimes mostly the international counselors that work a lot with international students. And so, as I said, we're a little bit more familiar with the types of curriculum and the classes that we might encounter from different countries. Uh, and from different national curriculums that we see. So last year at Providence College, in the application cycle, we received a little less than 11,000 total applications. And our acceptance rate was just under 55%. So that gives you an idea of how competitive admission is. The average GPA of someone who is admitted to Providence College for last year was just under a 3.6. So on an unweighted 4.0 scale, that is someone that is typically in between a B plus and A minus average. That is really the, the academic profile of someone being admitted. As you can tell from the slide, the third piece of our review deals with standardized test scores. And for international students and students applying from outside the US, it's largely the same uh, policy as domestic students. So as far as SAT and ACT goes, you do not ever need to submit those standardized test scores to be considered for admission at Providence College. We believe that your experience in high school is a lot more indicative of your academic fit to our campus than the standardized test score. So it's not necessarily a good predictor of your academic success when you arrive at Providence College as a student. The, the only test that would be required of someone that is applying from outside the US or international students within the US is proof of English proficiency. So if English has not been your first language or if English is not the language of instruction in your high school experience, then we will require you to submit a test requiring, excuse me, uh, providing proof of English proficiency. And so there are three ways that you can provide that test. You can take the TOEFL exam and the minimum score right now that we are looking for is a 90 on the TOEFL. You can take the IELTS exam and the minimum score that we require for the IELTS is a 7.5. Or you can take the Duolingo English exam and the minimum score that we require for that exam is a 120. And that's important because we feel like if you are providing that level of English proficiency, we have a lot more confidence in your ability to succeed as a student at Providence College. And Amori and Kate will talk a little bit more in just a second about the type of resources that you'll get once you're a student here. But I think that's a really good baseline uh, because if, you're below that threshold, classes like Development of Western Civ, we have found can be pretty challenging for students. So we wanna make sure that you are able to hit the ground running and make a smooth academic transition to Providence College. So you, you have the academic profile, that is certainly a big piece of our application review, but I think the personal qualities and the things that we learn about you from outside the classroom are a big piece of our decision-making as well. So we'd like to know how you spend your time outside the classroom, what you're involved with, and what you would like to be involved with once you arrive on our campus. You heard Yuho say that we have over 120 different clubs and organizations. And so I think that we ideally would like to bring students to campus that are going to be active members of this community. I mean, as a, a school of just around 4,000 students, we're a small enough place where you can have a, a pretty large impact at Providence College. Uh, and so I think we are always looking for students that would like to become leaders on our campus. And I said, like to be active members of the campus community. There is a supplemental essay that we have uh, as part of the application. So in the Common App, uh, you will have to do one like standard college essay. But we always kind of like it when students choose to fill out an one of the optional supplemental essays. 
as I say, it is optional, but, and you only have to do one of these. You don't have to do all three of them, but these essays, I think, give us a good indication of a student's interest in Providence. They're a little bit more specific to Providence College. And so when students fill these out, they let us, or like I said, just give us a, a better sense for your knowledge about PC and your level of interest once you are a student on campus. So the last thing I wanted to mention before turning things over to Amori and Kate are the application deadlines and methods that we have. So the early action application deadline is approaching fairly quickly. November 1st is the, both the early action and early decision deadline. And the difference between early action and early decision uh, is, pretty, is a pretty large one. So early decision is a binding agreement. You are essentially signing a contract that says, if I get admitted to Providence College, I will enroll here as a freshman. Now, the reason that students do that is because people know that Providence is their first choice, but also because early decision gives students the best chance at being admitted. And so, as I mentioned earlier, the acceptance rate last year was just under 55%. The acceptance rate at early decision is closer to 80%. So it's certainly a, a bigger difference in terms of the ease of being admitted to Providence. But the flip side is that it is a binding agreement. Early action is non-binding. So you can apply by November 1. You will get an admission decision back from us by uh, Christmas time, like the, just before the last week of December. And you will still have until May 1st to make up your mind about attending Providence College. Early decision two works the same way that early decision one does. It's just a later deadline. So it's still binding. It still gives you that competitive advantage, but it's just a later deadline. And also regular decision is the same as early action, just a later admission process. So the application deadline is in January. You will hear back from us typically around mid-March and you have until May 1st to make up your mind. The last piece of the application that I, I need to talk about is that we operate on a need aware admission basis for students coming from outside of the US. So what that means is that when you apply to Providence College, you also need to submit an international certificate of finances and that form you can find on our website. And if you're applying for financial aid, the CSS profile. So we do have a financial aid budget for international students and, and students coming from outside the US, it is fairly limited. Uh, it is not as robust as the funds and, that we have available for domestic students. And so, as I said, we operate at, on a need aware basis. How that works in practice means that we are essentially looking that, to see that students can afford at least half of the total cost of Providence College when you apply. So you can see on the slide the cost of attendance for this past year. Uh, we're still awaiting the final cost for this upcoming year, but that'll give you a pretty good idea of the amount that we typically are looking for when we are reviewing students uh, that are coming from outside the US and that do not hold a US passport. So again, if you're applying for financial aid, then we need the CSS profile. If you're not applying for financial aid, then we still are requiring the international certi uh, certification of finances form. You can find more information about those forms and the admission process in general on the website. Um, but for now, I wanted to turn things over uh, to both Katie and Amori because they are going to share a little bit about the resources that are available to you once you're a student here on campus. So oh, I will stop my screen share and turn things over to them. Thanks a lot. Awesome, thank you so much. I am unable to share my screen at this time. I don't know. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Um, we just wanted to give you a quick overview of the Office of Academic Services and introduce ourselves again. My name is Katie Fernandez. I am the Assistant Director for Student Success and Retention. Hi, um, I'm Amori Washington. I'm the Academic Skills slash ESL Specialist. All right. So 
We are housed in the Office of Academic Services, which is in the library. So this actually is a real photo of our space. Um, and I thought it was important for us to start with our mission. So the OAS, the Office of Academic Services, fosters inclusive excellence through a family of support centers that promote meaningful engagement and learning and equal access to educational opportunities. Services are tailored to address individual or shared needs, and they are offered in a safe, supportive environment where students are welcome and challenged to realize their full potential. And we do take a holistic approach. So yes, all of our support is geared around an academic success and reaching your academic goals, but it is important for us to take a holistic view as well when we are supporting and working with students. So here are our support centers. So we have academic skills and that's where Amori and I are um, a part of. And we'll get into a little bit more about what our work actually is. We have the tutoring center, the writing center, disability support and student athlete services. So we do offer a lot of different services and keeping in mind that all of our support is accessible and free. So to give you a little bit more context, um, we'll start with the tutoring center. So students are able to meet with our tutors who are peers and they are CRLA certified, um, which means that they have gone through a rigorous amount of trainings to be able to provide the tutoring support in specific content areas. So on the right, you'll see this is a sample of the subject areas that we offer tutoring in. This is not all of um, our tutoring subjects, but just a sample. And students can come to see us in our physical space to make an appointment or they can sign up online. And they also can have a in-person tutoring session or a virtual tutoring session. We do ask that everyone makes their appointment at least 16 hours in advance. So it allows our tutors to have time to prepare for their session with you. Similar to the tutoring center, we have the writing center and the sign up is the same, the certifications, they go through the same rigorous training. Um, and the awesome thing about the writing center is that they meet students at any stage of the writing process. So they can work on brainstorming, um, working specifically on a thesis, just making a draft or an outline. And it really is accessible for students. So, you know, sometimes you can meet with a tutor once or twice or even three times on the same paper to really get it to its full um, completion where students feel that they are ready to submit. And again, you can sign up online for these services. So it is very accessible. And our tutors, again, are offering virtual and in-person services. So I think this is very unique at the college level because all of these services are free. And we have over 65 student tutors um, that work really, really hard to support the PC community and the students that they work with. To transition over um, into the academic skills, I'll hand that over to you, Amori, to share a little bit about what exactly you and I do. Yes, thank you, Katie. So we are part of the Office of Academic Services. Um, our specific unit is the Academic Skills Unit, and we offer academic coaching as well as ESL support. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more about my uh, position, but again, as Katie mentioned, you're able to book with us in person or online. And this is just a breakdown of the number of different things that we can help and support you with. All right, so just kind of going into my position, it's a new position. This is only my sixth week on the um, campus here at PC. Um, so I just wanted to break this down so that you're able to see the ways that I can um, assist you and work with you if you decide to come to PC. 
So first is the academic skills portion. Um, and that is where I or Katie would offer academic coaching. And these are one-on-one -on -one sessions in which we can work through some different strategies that would best support you and help improve your academic performance. So just to name a few of those things, it could be with time management, organization, test taking, note taking, or just balancing life as a college student. So maybe if you feel as though you're a student who sometimes struggles with procrastinating, um, you can come see us and we can build a schedule or a plan to help you deal with that in order to balance all of your coursework and assignments. So that's the first part, which is the academic coaching. And then the second part here is the ESL support. And that's where I come in, where again, I offer one-to-one -one sessions. Um, and that is for multilingual students. So maybe English is not your first language, or if you are someone who maybe doesn't feel super confident in the way that you're able to use English in this college setting. So first we have the language and communication part. So reading, writing, speaking, and listening. When you come into PC, you're gonna be expected to write pretty long papers, participate in academic discussions in class, give oral presentations, and all of that is going to be a huge part of your grade and your academic performance. So if you are feeling a little bit hesitant about that or just would like some extra support and help, that's where you can schedule an appointment, a session with me, and we can work through those things. Um, another piece is academic English. So when you come into the college setting, you're going to be expected to understand academic English, academic voice, and use it in your papers especially. And that can be a bit of a challenge, even if you have been um, learning English for a long time or if that is like your second language, it might still be a little bit of a challenge to transition to using academic English when it comes to your course assignments. So I can help you with that as well. And then next we have this culture piece. So as an international student coming into Providence College, it's probably gonna be a little bit unfamiliar, the structure of the college itself, understanding your courses, how they're set up, credits, and different assignments that a professor might present to you. So I can also assist with introducing you to the US college structure and what your professors are expecting from you. What sort of performance would they like to see from you as a student that is coming into PC? So all of these things are just some of the um, things that we can cover if you decide to book a session, whether it be for academic coaching or for ESL support. So this piece here is just kind of describing what makes our unit a great resource for you. So first, we're conveniently located on the second floor of the library, and our offices are inside of the Writing Center. So the library is a very nice space. Students are here throughout the day and the night. Um, it's a comfortable place to just complete your assignments, to, set, to study. It's quiet. You're able to use the computers here or to print. So we're located right on the second floor. You could come in into the writing center, whether you have an appointment or if you have a session with one of us. And secondly, one-on-one -on -one sessions with staff. I think this is super helpful and super useful for new, new students, especially because sometimes you might not feel super comfortable reaching out to a professor, or asking them for help, but you do need some guidance or assistance. So scheduling a one-on-one -on -one session with us, we're able to individualize our meetings and we're able to craft the support so that it fits you. And you're free to ask any questions. And if we don't have the answer, we're willing to work with you to figure it out together. And again, this can be done virtually or in person. Um, next, you decide how we can help. So whether that be academic coaching, if you come in and you really think that time management is what you wanna work on and you know exactly what you wanna do, then we can work on that. But if you're not too sure and you just wanna kind of express what's going on, maybe you wanna share some of the classes that you're really enjoying, but maybe some classes you don't like, we can discuss what are the ways that we can combat whatever issues might come up. So even if you're unsure exactly where you need help, you can still schedule an appointment and we can have a conversation and figure it out together. And whether that be Katie and I connecting you with tutors or helping you reach out to professors or your dean, there's a number of different ways that we can help. So we always just enforce students to come in and be willing to make an appointment so that way we can figure out the best ways to help you. And lastly, um, we have a commitment to understanding and assisting all different types of students. So it doesn't matter what year you are, what major you decide, what program or school you're in, 
you can come in and receive the support services here. So if you do decide to come to PC, don't hesitate to reach out to one of us because we're here to offer our services and support you. Yep, and then this here is just um, the links to our webpage. So we have an Instagram, as well as you can visit us online and learn more and learn a little bit more about our space and our services and what we offer. Thanks, and I'll give it back to Matt. Hey, thank you very much uh, to Yuho and to Amori and to Katie for sharing a little bit more about I've, what makes Providence College uh, a great place to spend the next four years. So there uh, were a couple questions that I saw in the Q&A that I'd like to get through. Uh, and then if no one else has any additional questions, then we can wrap up for the day. Um, but we had a question that said um, that they had gone to a technical high school in chemistry and had many college level classes. Does this count as a good high school curriculum? So, I mean, it is a little tough without actually looking at the transcript, but if you're taking college level classes already, then typically we view that as a fairly strong curriculum as preparation for academic work once you arrive here. Uh, as I said, each individual transcript and each individual application is viewed um, in the context of their of your offering and what was available to you. So again, it's a little tough without having the transcript in front of me, but the conditions that you describe look like or sound like a curriculum that would be pretty competitive for admission at PC. Well, all of our contact information is on Providence College's website, uh, and you will get a follow-up email from us for attending the webinar, so that you'll, you can easily contact us if you have questions afterwards. But I wanted to thank everyone for attending. I know we had a little bit of a technical mix-up uh, when we first started, so I appreciate you sticking around and, uh, you know, coming or viewing the webinar. Um, so yeah, the, I, I just saw one more question that came in. So sorry about that. Uh, I said, I, I'm from Vietnam. My GPA is pretty low, two, five to three. Can I apply to Providence College? Absolutely. Uh, you can certainly apply. And I think the average GPA that I talked about a little bit earlier is probably a, I guess, not as applicable to international students just because the scale is so different many times for your grading scale and the, the scale that is uh, your, you're experiencing in your individual country. And that's why the international team kind of reviews these applications uh, a little bit separate from the rest of the pool. So you may have a lower GPA and one that falls below the average of an invited student but maybe it's because the curriculum that exists in your high school or at, at your national curriculum is extremely demanding and is extremely tough. And that 3.0 GPA is a little bit more impressive than a higher GPA in a different curriculum with a different set of classes. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the average GPA is nice to know but there are students that get invited to Providence that have a GPA lower than that. And it's because the curriculum that they've taken has prepared them pretty well for academic success once they arrive on campus. Great, and I, they keep coming in, this is nice. Oh, that was the, that was the other question. Okay, so thank you again. Uh, I wanted to just uh, express my gratitude for you learning more about Providence College today. We hope you have a great rest of your academic year. We hope that you stay safe, that you stay healthy, and we look forward to welcoming you to campus. So have a great rest of the day and we will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you, everyone.